Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Rumor has it these Zod Dart 250s fly really well on 18650 two cell setups. Okay, let's go over the parts you need in order to make this happen. You'll notice that I've got a two cell balance lead and I've made a slight modification. I extended the middle lead because my wires weren't long enough to run the length of the battery. You'll understand why I did this later. And if you need to do it, all you have to do is just solder a little pigtail extension on the middle lead. And I will cover that as we get into the pack build. The other thing I've got is a little shunt or a connector that will connect one end of the batteries together in series. I've got some silicone wire that I'll be connecting with an XT30 connector and soldering onto the top of the batteries. The batteries I'm using are 18650 Samsung 25Rs. They are 20 amp, 2500 milliamp hour batteries. Okay, let's get started putting this thing together. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. I promise I won't include footage of me soldering up XT30 connectors. The only reason I'm even showing you this part is because I just wanted to show you a quick little tip that I use when I solder XT60s, and that's that I take both connection types and I put them together. So even though I'm only soldering on one, the reason I do that is because number one, the extra metal helps dissipate the heat on the end I'm soldering. And then number two, if the nylon loosens a little bit, the other connector helps keep the pins aligned and prevents them from getting out of alignment, which makes sliding these connectors on and off very difficult. So just slide the other half on, make sure you tin everything up before you start soldering, and then just hit it real quick and, and get done with it. Okay, I have my XT60 pigtail made, I've got my balance lead connector ready to go, and I've got my series connector for the bottom of the pack. All right, notice on the batteries, I just took a small piece of heat shrink and wrapped it around the batteries just to kind of hold things together while I work on them. And then before you start soldering, you want to take a piece of sandpaper and just scuff up the surfaces. You're not trying to go through the metal, all you're trying to do is scuff it up. And the reason you want to do that is because you want that solder to soak in there and have something to bite on. So then after you've scuffed them, just give them a good little wipe down with alcohol. We don't want anything to prohibit the solder from forming a nice bond on these cells. And you do need to scuff up all four terminals because we're gonna be connecting to all four terminals. Okay, with that done, it's time to solder. The first thing that we're going to do is connect our little series connector. And for the battery alignment, you want one positive and one negative. Okay, it doesn't really matter which battery, just one positive, one negative. And before you start soldering on these batteries, make sure you put some flux down so that solder knows where to go. Just put that on there, give it a good layer, and now we have to tin. You definitely want to tin this and you want it, the trick is to get on and off as fast as we can. Before you start soldering on these cells, make sure you've got them scuffed, make sure you clean them with alcohol, make sure you put down some flux. And if you've got a wide angle tip or a tip that can apply a lot of heat real fast, use that because you want to get the heat on and off as quick as you can. And all I'm looking to do is tin these. I'm not trying to build up a layer or anything. I'm just trying to tin them real quick. As soon as I see that solder move onto that battery, I'm off. There we go. That's it. Just on and off as fast as you can do it. As soon as that solder sticks. All right, now that my terminals are tinned, I'm gonna go ahead and get my crossover connection soldered on. You might wanna use a tool to help hold it down because this is gonna get real hot real fast. You wanna make sure you have a very good connection there. There we go. That definitely got a hold of that terminal. All right, that's the first side. Now I'll flip it over and do the second side. Once you've got a solid mechanical connection on the bottom, it's time to turn our attention to the top. On the top, we're gonna to do the same thing, but this time we have to pay attention to polarity. The button is positive and the flat surface is negative.
Okay, I've got my leads connected now, positive to positive, negative to negative. I have a series connection. It's time to get out the voltmeter and check my voltage. Okay, looks like 7.13 volts, which is correct. Now it's time to solder on the balance lead. Okay, let's map out the wires for the balance lead. You've got a positive, a ground, and a ground. The positive lead will go to the positive terminal on the top. The first negative lead will go to the negative lead on the top. And the middle negative lead will go down to the bottom. And we can connect it to either side of the battery. That's why I had to make this extension. Because I didn't want to have a really short balance lead coming out of my pack. So I added the extension so that I could use all of the wire just like that hanging off with the XT30 main leads connection. Now the other thing I'm going to do since I already have the shrink wrap in place is I'm going to tuck these wires in because this is a live pack now and the last thing I want to do is start arcing with loose wires all over the place. So just to kind of keep things tucked away for the moment I'm going to use that shrink wrap. I've already got my I've already got the balance lead tinned, so I just need to flip it over and hit the solder that's on the series wire and just melt it in there and tuck it into that wire that's sitting right on top. Okay, that's done now, and the same thing will happen on top. Just remember to pay attention to polarity. We'll connect the positive first, and then we'll do the negative. There we go, that's a nice clean solder. It's worth making sure you take the extra time to get this right, because the last thing you want is for your balance leads to come apart and not work sometime after you've got everything tidied up. Okay, there's my balance lead connection. Now I'm going to give it one more check, and I'm not going to be real kind to it. I want to make sure if it's going to come apart, I want it to happen now while I have the shrink wrap off. And I'd say that all feels pretty good. And then down there, that feels like a good solid mechanical linkage. So that's it. Now I've got my battery ready to go. Okay, before I shrink wrap this thing up, I'm going to go ahead and check the voltages on my balance lead. So I've got my red lead down on the bottom. I'll put that on my voltmeter as red, and I'll connect to the first black wire. And I'll plug the voltmeter in to, my, to the other end of that test lead. And I should get three and a half volts, which looks good. Now I can pop that off and move it over one slot. And again, I should get three and a half volts when I plug this into the voltmeter. And that looks good. Okay, after checking with my multimeter, I'm just going to plug it into a charger and make sure the charger agrees that it's the two cell battery. And there we go. I've got 3.58 and 3.57, so that looks good. Since I plan on shrink wrapping this battery pack, I'm just going to put some tape over these cells to provide a little bit of protection and strain relief. So I'm just going to line my cables up, pull that tape down nice and tight, and this is, a, this is a scotch fiber tape or a packing tape. And again, I'm doing that just to provide some strain relief on the wires. And same thing on the bottom, just to give a little extra support down there to that mechanical linkage. And then finally, the shrink tube. If you're curious about this, I actually did the homework on this one, and it's not easy to find, but it looks like in order to do two 18650 batteries, you use a 60 millimeter flat shrink tube. Okay, so you don't need very much on the top or the bottom, just a little bit of overlap so you can cover it. And I also know when you shrink this stuff, go nice and slow, do not get the batteries hot. That's the last thing you need to do after all this work is, is to cook your batteries. So just go nice and slow on a low heat,
And there we go. A two cell 18650 Lion pack, balance lead connector, and shrink wrap. All right, guys, that's all I've got on how to make your own two cell 18650 Lion pack. I'm going to put this in the dart next time I go flying and give it a try and see how it does. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and a notification bell so you know new material hits the channel. That's all I've got for tonight. Take it easy.